Suave, wealthy, intelligent, these are just a few of the words commonly used when describing Jay Hopson. But Jay, and the people who know him well, will tell you that wealth and notoriety hasn't changed him one bit. This is the story of Jay... Jay... Can we just use his nickname? Uh, uh, Jay Hopson. In the summer of 2008, while checking his mail, Jay ran across a letter that stipulated he had been drafted into the Special Ops Unit of the U.S. Army. I just knew they had made a mistake and made to say I was being drafted to the Denver Nuggets. But after 16 missed phone calls and those MPs that showed up to my door with them M16s, I kind of then figured out that it was the Army. Jay shows up to basic training with three other members of his unit to find out they had been tasked to find the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden. I explained the mission to my unit and let them know that finding Osama bin Laden would be a long and strenuous task, but it had to be done. We weren't returning home without that bearded son of a... Yeah. Yeah, found him. Hiding in the woods. Woo! But I got him, though. Yo. I mean, it was like they were searching in all the wrong places. I mean, he was right there in the cave, chilling, watching Sports Center. It's like they wanted this war to keep going, you know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> and get back to Richland he did, but this time he was returning with 30 million dollars. At first I was just happy to hear that he was back from the war. When I found out he had 30 million dollars, only one thing came to mind. Strip club. Jay had all the material things that he could ever imagine, but there was still something missing in his life. Oh, yeah. I remember the first time I met him. I mean, I had to let them know, it's not your booty, it's your beauty. I mean, I can give y'all a lift. I mean, I only live like five minutes away. Uh-huh. No, no. Come here, come here, girl. We, we gonna... Hold on, mister. See, with the way society is built today, people are always trying to go to these skinny bitches. But you know what? You know he wanted all of these. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, Jay was cute. He was no ways to leave the ass up. He's got to win me over. After exchanging numbers, Jay and Connie both decided to meet up at the mall where they ran into a celebrity and Connie's ex-boyfriend, Don. After the death of the great Michael Jackson, Jay realized that life is short and he should spend more time with his elderly granddad. Boys, you crazy human gave me all the time. My day, ho, my fault, King Tut's daddy. Yeah, me and Jay were real close. Even after he signed Jason 5 and Marvin Gaye, he would call to come by and check no, on me. That's Barry Gordy. You say what now? That's Barry Gordy. <laughs> it is, ain't it? <laughs> As things become more serious between Jay and Connie, Connie feels it's time to introduce him to her family. Yo, hold up, man. I, I can provide for my lady. Nathaniel. Oh, 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 my bad, my, my bad, my bad, my bad. My you so cool, you What? Jay? You see, okay, you. I didn't want to have to put my hands on him, but some old people need to be beat. I mean, not the ones in rest homes, though. They, they shouldn't be beat, though. That's not nice. You see, you call me old, dear, because you got What happened was unfortunate, but Jay's a young and well mannered man. I could see a spark between him and Connie. And speaking of sparks, Jay ran across Connie's brother, Drizzy, who was known for making sparks himself. <laughs> oh, man, when I first met Drizzy, I mean, I thought he was on fire. I mean, there was smoke everywhere. This dude stay high. People say I smoke too much, but I don't think they smoke enough. In July 2010, Jay decided to purchase a studio and start a new record label titled J-Town Records. His very first artist, JV, became a well-known name around Richland and the state of Virginia. Vibe out with is the Joseph Rosa six there? Can you keep up with me? Yeah. Don't know what to do. What to do? All these lips.
You know, I really think Jay only signed JV because Soulja Boy was out at the time. But I mean, he ain't had no street cred. Not like me. Check this out. My name is Rick, and I'm so cool. I got y'all all going back to school. Don't need a boat. Don't need a train. My car leave marks like doo-doo stains. Check me out. Life couldn't get any better for Jay until Jay and his beloved Connie were kidnapped by her ex, Dom. Thanks to Rick calling the police, Jay was saved from an ass of trouble. I got inside and it was a little off in there, a little peculiar, you know what I mean? Um, so I hastily called the police right then and there. And I told them that, you know, uh, some problems might be going on. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it wasn't for me, I think we'd be blowing two kisses to the sky for Jay and Connie. Man, I guess you can call me a hero. After Jay's near-death experience, he decided to go away with Connie to his Uncle Ronnie's house to recoup and ask for help to promote Jay Town Records. After returning, Rick shows Jay a vacated building for sale and pitches his plans to turn it into a club, Hot Wax. Jay likes the idea and decides to co-own Hot Wax. Hey cousin, this can work for both of us. If you get your artists in here, that's gonna promote me and your label. You know what, Rick? Yo, that's a good idea. Jay's next artist, Iso Black, skyrockets J-Town Records so nationally black, as Iso so Black black became a platinum selling artist. Man, I don't even know what to say, like, everything I am now is because of Jay, he put me on a platform so I can shine, man, like, I went from being behind hard bars to spit. Yeah, I so fresh, fresh, I so clean, I so black in this bitch on me. I so high, couple birds on me. I so good with my mug on me. As much love as Jay and J Town Records was receiving, there were also haters. Kingpin of Richland and Xavier was not enthused of Jay taking the shine off his artist from his record label, Raping You Records. Xavier was hating because his artists were trash and I ain't asked permission to start my label in Richland. I was like, fuck you. Who you think you is, Ron O'Neal? This dude Jay didn't realize who he was dealing with. Xavier's like Shook Knight, the devil, Casey Anthony all balled up in the one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, what, too soon? Instead of retreating, Jay decided to add more firepower to his arsenal at J-Town. He next signed female rapper, Vicky Love, an R&B singer, Dre too. Jay saved me from raping you records. They were trying to put me on the shelf unless I rap sexual or degrading content. Unlike Jay. I wanted to be successful bad, and Jay helped me get there. He understood what success meant to me. Bitches, money, and whips. Look, man. We were bringing in so much cash, we had nowhere to store it anymore, man. Thank Jesus for strip clubs. Can I get my weed now, man? In the fall of 2010, Richland tried to prepare itself for a massive hurricane coming right in its direction. After the storm passed, Jay found more than water down in his basement. So I went down to check out the damage and saw the wall had caved in. And to my surprise, a runaway as the wall. And I ain't talking about a little kid who was mad at his parents either. I'm talking about like Kunta Kente run away. Jay decides it's time to make it official with Connie and proposes to him. I was so happy for my girl Connie. If anybody deserved to find some strength charming, it was her. Their wedding plans came to a screeching halt when Connie went into labor and found out that she was actually having twins. Oh, boys. I am so happy right now. Hey, no, is that because I'm drunk? Push, push. Oh, what's, what, what's going on, Doc? Oh, <laughs> what is that, Doc? Please don't tell me that's another that's baby. That's a girl. You got twins. Oh, man. What the? God blessed us that day with our son, Cannon, and our beautiful daughter, Jania. Oh, man. That was one of the happiest. One of the happiest days of my life. By far. Totally. With only a few weeks until his wedding, Drizzy, Rick, Mike, and Drama decide to take Jay to Atlantic City for a bachelor party. This would become a night that Jay would never forget in his life. All right, man, take it easy. Who the hell was that? I don't know, man, it was some guy. He said he saw Jay falling out of control. Yeah. Yo, let me get everything on the top row. Dude said he wanted to make an exchange. 
the hell did he want? He said we'd get Jay back if we gave him a thousand copies of Joe Budden's last album in a fresh banana, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Yo, that was the craziest bachelor party I've ever been to. <laughs> oh, man, it was wild. I never let them boys throw me a football, let alone a party again. Bros are for hoes, people. People get kidnapped every day. They whining this sh- Finally, the winning day had come for Connie and Jay, and everyone was looking forward to it. But no one more than Xavier and his goons. Bullets barely miss Jay, but hit Drizzy, which almost takes his life. You know, I thought my boy Drizzy was a gun. So he took those bullets like a G. <laughs> and we had to get... <clears throat> we had to allegedly get Xavier and his goons back for that. Jay will tell you he has much more in store in his life, and to stay tuned to see it. I am Ryan Seacrest. Thanks for watching. Seacrest out.